I have been dyeing fabric like crazy with anything I can get my hands on that was going to give me any kind of color. And that is the best way to do things because you're always getting surprised. So I figured it was time I did a little show and tell and talk to you a little bit about getting color on fabric. I will give you a rough idea of what I did. I won't be able to tell you exactly on everything, or maybe I will. Who knows? You never can tell. But cheesecloth, right? Who can ever have enough dyed cheesecloth? This was some archival reinkers, so they don't really spread like a lot of the other uh, things that we might want to use. So they give you some great little blotches. And I just love the blotchy greens on here. And then I also, on a lot of them, used archival ink pads that I was trying to use up because I just really don't use ink pads that much. And so by just scraping the ink pad along things, I got some really great marks. And it'll show up even better on some of the other ones. But, you know, you can just see just random marks. And I didn't have to do anything. It was just, oh, they were wonderful. Just love them. I have a huge stack here, you guys. I have been crazy with this. And I have more that I'm going to do because I need some in blue because I got this great idea of things to do with my knots. And I hardly had any blue knots. And I realized that what I wanted to do were blue knots. So... Some great cheesecloth. Then this is, um, I might have mentioned, maybe on Instagram, um, I had found a whole bunch of t-shirts. And there's actually more green in here. Kind of hard to get the lighting right. We got our storm going on outside. But these were just scraps of t-shirts that I had saved because I was going to use them for rags. And I had a bunch of walnut ink sprays. And so this is like the eucalyptus spray and the walnut spray and the java sprays. And these are going to be great because one of the things I'm going to do with the, the sculpture stuff is, well, let me just take one of these and stuff it up, is be making some 3D things. And the, you know, I'll put some fiber fill around it so I can get it kind of smoothed out can do some needle sculpting and that's just going to be really fun to do and the t-shirt material really lends itself to it really well. So if you have any walnut spray inks floating around in your crafting space, you might like, I mean, look at the, oh, I just love that mottled effect. And basically what I did was I wet the material and then I scrunched it up and just started spraying and I would put like other pieces of material underneath it. And then when it came time to dry, I left it scrunched up because then it's going to dry differently. And sometimes I just went back over and, you know, sprayed some more water on it. I mean, I just love all the variants that pop up in here. Now you could get the same kind of an effect with some watered down paint, some watered down ink, some actual watercolors. I'm just trying to use up some of the things I have here, and I'm actually going to be going into using up some of my, my paints next. I think that's the next thing I'm going to be working on. But, I mean, look at this. And then, of course, for stitching, the t-shirt material is also really fun to use as well, just uh, you know, to cut little pieces out and stitch it down on some kind of textile piece. So this was really fun. This was an old shirt, I think. It just looks like coffee dye, but it's the walnut inks. Now here, I'm still using the t-shirt material, but now I combined my reinkers with some sprays, and then I even dribbled some alcohol inks in here. I'm trying to use up my alcohol inks because I really, I get a headache when I use them, so I'm going to be using them up. So, I, you know, you can combine everything. You don't have to feel like you only have to use one kind of thing. Uh, now, one of the questions I get asked all the time, is this permanent? And the second question, is this light fast? So, what I suggest you do is ask yourself, what are you going to be using the fabric for? Are you going to be trying to make clothes that can go into the laundry? If that's the case, then yeah, you really need to be concerned about whether things are permanent and light fast and you don't want them to run, you know, in the rest of the stuff in your laundry. That would not be a good idea. 
But if you're not going to wash them, if you're going to be using them in your journals or your textile art, your wall art, your fiber sculptures, then it really doesn't matter, does it? Okay, these are all alcohol inks with a little bit of um, glimmer mists on top of some of them. That's where the little bits of the sparkle is coming from. So I was really hoping to go for some great forest colors, and I really like that. I got everything all wet with alcohol inks, did the same sort of thing, just scrunched it up because the alcohol inks are not going, because it's going to be absorbed in the fabric, they're not going to spread like they would if you were using it on the non-porous things like acetate or Yupo paper or something like that. But you can still get some great effects. And I have fabrics that I dyed with alcohol inks five years ago, and they've been just sitting in a corner of the studio, and everything is just fine. So uh, it for me, it's a way. I wouldn't go out and buy alcohol inks specifically to do it. I'm trying to use things up so that I can go to mostly just using my fabric paints and dyes. Look at the wonderful little sparkle here. But again, using up, my friend gave me some uh, wonderful selection of glimmer mists, and I'm really having a good time, you know, using them up like this. And again, this is the t-shirt the material, so it's going to react a little differently when you stitch into it. It's very soft, though. The alcohol inks don't change the feel of the fabric very much. So I think here I'm back to some of the ink pads. Um, ink pads are great. You can use your distress pads on them. Just remember that when you put the water on it, you're going to get the spread, and that's a really fun thing to get. I mean, you can get the distress spray, um, the, the wonderful ways they interact with one another. You can get that kind of a look on the fabric, and it's great. You just, again, have to remember, what are you going to use it for? If you're, if you're only going to put it in a journal, or you're going to use it you know, on a journal cover even, I think you're fine. You're absolutely fine. I would not suggest using any kind of a pigment ink pad. Okay, so now this was the original side, some Busy Fabric. And this is after some ink pads and some walnut stains. I would not use any kind of a pigment pad because sometimes they just never dry. Even after I have tossed them in the dryer, I find they don't really want to dry. This fabric is some of my favorite. It is a uh, Model sheet, which is a natural thing, and it's just, it feels like silk. It's just, oh. So I'm going to be doing some stuffed, I'm going to be doing like some long pieces that I stuff and stitch into for the sculpture, and I might do some knots in it since I got some nice long pieces here. So I combine anything and everything. I love to use my leftover paint water to dye fabric because, you know, it's acrylic paint. It's going to be permanent. It's not going to go anywhere. You can probably just, you know, throw it in the washing machine like your other stuff, and it's going to be just fine. Um, it, you get to the end of your paint bottles, fill it up with some water, dump it in the tub, and just start, you know, dumping your clothes in there, or your fabric in there. So clothes, because this, I can tell, is a sh uh, sleeve from something. And so I'm gradually getting the pattern to go more in the background. I think I need to hit this with some glimmer mist to kind of wake it up a little bit. Here's some linen. You really get the nice lines from the stamp pads in here. Ugh, some of these are just, I just love them. Love them, love them. I tried to show them over on Instagram, and it's just really hard when you have small pictures, so I knew I needed to do a video. I swear I just let the archival re-inkers just drip on there just to get some wonderful drips. I mean, can you imagine just taking this and just picking the colors from here and starting to stitch into it, which is something I think I might have to do. I might have to do with one of these. Or maybe with one of these. And you know, just use your watercolors. If all you have is watercolors, use watercolors. I've done that. You get some great effects on fabric with your watercolors. And I know I'm not showing you every side, every page, but there's so much here. I mean, I just really went to town. Now, this was one of my paint wipe-up rags. So I've got the chunks of paint on there, and it was just sitting here on the side, and I still had some liquid left, so I just dumped it in there. And it was great. You just, you just keep getting all the pretties. All the pretties. Oh, and this one's got the blues. 
I forgot I did something with blues and now I'm working with the blue knots. I've got to save this aside because this is going to go perfectly with that. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad I decided to do this video so I could show you guys this and I could find that for me. So what are your favorite things to use to color fabric? Do you worry about things like, you know, what's light fast, what's not? I get so many more here. I won't keep going. But you get the idea. When it comes to coloring fabric, anything goes. Give it a try. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this, what you think about dyeing fabric. And if you're not already a subscriber, I hope you'll hit the subscribe button. And maybe tell a friend about this channel and share it with them. I will see you next time. Bye-bye for now.